Hi, my name is Dan, and in this video, we're going to go through the changes for the Bookstack September feature release. Now, the biggest new feature that I want to talk about is page content references. This is a new system that shows you how content is linked between different pages and items within Bookstack. I'll jump into my demo instance here, and if we go to Books and I'll click on a book, we can see in the details that this now shows that it's referenced on the three pages. If I click on that, I'll get this references view, which gives a full breakdown of the different pages that are linking specifically to this book item. So if we go into one of these and scroll down, I can see there's a link here to that book that we were just viewing. So by using this system, you can get a really good idea of what content is leading to what content or which pages may be using the current one that you might be editing and things like that to hopefully give you a little bit more insight. Now, something about this feature is that it tracks these links as you save and create content within Bookstack. It won't automatically pick up links on old content, but there's a built-in way to index your old content to find such links. If you go to settings and then maintenance, down the bottom, you'll find a new section in here called regenerate references. So clicking on that, We'll look through all your content and find those links and rebuild that index internally within Bookstack. And as it mentions here, uh, there is a way to do this via a command line command that's within the Bookstack documentation. If you prefer that approach or if you have any timeout issues doing that within the interface, you can use that alternative method instead. Now, a new thing that this new references system allows us to do within Bookstack by tracking these links we can now automatically update these links when content changes within your system. So looking at this book again, if we update the name of this, which would generally change the URL, and we can save that, and then we can see the URL has changed to our company's procedures to match the name, as it's always done within Bookstack. But now if we have a look at one of those pages that's referencing this current book, and we'll hover over this, we can now see, if you look in the bottom left there, that that is linking to our company procedures. The so books that has gone through, it, upon that book change, it's looked for pages that are referencing it and automatically updated those pages. If we have a look in the revisions here, you'll actually see an entry within here, system auto update of internal links. So it creates a revision, so you have full visibility over the changes that have occurred within the system. To support this change, we've also increased the default page revision limit per page from 50 to 100, although that is something you can configure yourself if you need to change that within your system. So the next new feature that we've added to Bookstack is OpenID Connect Group Sync support. So we added OIDC authentication support about a year ago now, but I wasn't confident about how group sync would work in the different environments that people use OpenID Connect. So over the last year, I've been taking a lot of feedback and within this release, we're implementing that feedback to provide a group sync support, much like the existing SAML and LDAP authentication methods uh, in that they also provide group syncing support. If I jump into my bookstack.env, this is the additional options that you might want to define if already using OpenID Connect. So we have an option to enable group sync support for OIDC, and then you'll define an option to specify which claim the groups exist upon, and Bookstack's going to look for an array of names, an array of strings basically, that will be your groups that should match with roles within Bookstack. And this can be a nested property as well. That's fully within our documentation for OpenID Connect within Bookstack. Then you can define additional scopes to request on the authorization request to OpenID Connect. Some platforms like Otka, they need an additional scope to say, hey, I want to fetch those groups. And then we have this remove from groups option, which will, when true, will remove a user from the groups that they don't match with against the authentication system. So by default, it would, Bookstack would only add people to groups that it matches up with, but setting this to true will remove them from groups that it don't match with. So with these options set up, you can then choose to log in to your Bookstack instance, log in with your OIDC system, and then, like if I go to my user profile for this user, I'm then added to the groups that I match against within the authentication system. So within this version of Bookstack, we've added a new image storage option which is a local secure restricted image storage option. Previously, we had a local secure option, which would ensure the user is authenticated or logged in before providing an image file. 
This takes it a layer above that and will check that the user has permission to access the related item to that image before providing them access to the image file itself. As an example, I've configured this image storage option within my Booksack instance by setting storage type local secure restricted. If you're coming from a different option and you've already uploaded images within your instance, you might have to do some migration, which is detailed within our documentation. But skipping over that now, I will go into my instance and I've got a restricted book here that is limited to just what effectively is the admin role. And it's got this image that I've uploaded into it. And so if I open up that image, I can see that absolutely fine. And of course that's showing within the page content. Whereas if I open a tab as a different user like this one here, and I go to that URL, it's going to show me an image not found page because it wasn't able to load that because my permissions check didn't pass. So yeah, new option, a nice new level of security upon the existing options. So something to keep in mind with this option is that it can create some logical scenarios where images may not be found. For example, if you uploaded an image to a page and that page was copied, then different permissions applied to that. And you could get into a scenario where a user could see the page, but not the images within them because the images still relate to a page that they don't have permissions for. And same if like a page was deleted, then you won't pass the image permission check for the images that were uploaded to that page. So yeah, a few of these scenarios might occur. Some of them we might kind of solve through future releases if they really become issues. Otherwise, a lot of them are just kind of permission-based scenarios that can complicate things. So yeah, just be wary of that. And it's still kind of considered experimental while this feature is just being introduced. Next up is a new event that we've added to the logical theme event that is specific to page includes. So page includes are this system within Bookstack that allows you to fetch content from other pages and then insert it dynamically into a different page. They look something like this within the editor. The new theme event, if we jump into a text editor, it looks something like this. So you listen to a specific page include pass theme event. And here we're just doing something really simple is returning the content in uppercase that would usually be replaced. Books that gives you a whole bunch of things like the original tag reference, the replacement HTML that it uses by default, and the current page and then the reference page. And then you can do whatever you want with those and then you can return some content and then that will be used and essentially override Bookstack's default behavior. So yeah, we are uppercasing it here. So if we have a look at that, we'll save this. And now we're including some content from another page and it's all been uppercased thanks to our custom logic. So quite an arbitrary example there, but there's a lot more you can do. You can add uh, additional permission controls if your environment requires it, or you can set custom fallback content or whatever customizations you need to do should now be possible. And lastly, we've got a new language in the book stack for this release, which is Romanian. If I change my preferred language here, and then we get our interface in Romanian. A big thank you to this user here. I won't try and pronounce the name because I know I'll butcher it, but yeah, they've done a lot of translations within the last release cycle to get this language in. And again, a big shout out to all the translators that put in the work for every release cycle. But yeah, that just about covers all the significant items for this release. It's worth noting there's quite a few upgrade notices for this release, just with potential changes that might affect things. So it's worth having a quick read through those before upgrading. But other than that, that's everything. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.